There's a real lack of appreciation of how important water is. We think we have an infinite resource. The oceans are at a tipping point. They're getting choked by the amount of plastic that's in them. And really, plastic pollution is one of the easiest problems to solve. If we can't stop the plastic, we really have no hope. This is why we're so passionate about getting the litter trap out there, so people can take responsibility and to stop this plastic at its source, going down our drains and stop it choking our oceans. One of the biggest problems with, with plastic pollution is the misconception that all the drains are treated. Most of the stormwater drains, the grates on the side of the road, go straight to the ocean via a stream or a river, and then people don't actually realise that. And so with them, by throwing their cigarette butt down the drain, it's as good as throwing it in the beach. It was about 1994, I was working at the City Council. I was designing stormwater treatment devices, and I was learning how bad the runoff was of the urban areas. And I was designing these treatment devices, and I was thinking, of, well, what can we do? That, you know, we put these devices into new developments, but we're not actually doing anything about the existing environment, like the cities and the CBD. And I saw the catch basin as an opportunity, and I th thought, well, why can't we just do something in that hole? And I talked to Greg at the beach one win one weekend, and I was telling them about what I was doing, and, and they said, well, why don't we try to do something? Mike was learning a lot about the problem in his industry, threw it out there and threw ideas back and forward and came up with a starting point really. So the Envirapod was in its fledgling days, we started just playing around with a, with a bag and a pit and built up some pretty crude prototypes and we started just putting those into pits and finding that it was a little bit more complex and needed a bit more design attention. So it's really a process of concepts, prototypes, testing, iterations of that have gone round and round, perfecting the product and overcoming all the challenges. So with this confidence that it would work, we put some trials in with North Shore City Council, who were really impressed with how much it was catching and how little, little capital cost it was, and we just kept on going. And whenever we would introduce it to people, they thought, well, this is a really sensible one simple approach, why don't we just do it? The last five years we've spent redeveloping the product into the litter trap. It's taken a lot of thought and, and a lot of research to scale it to take it to the next level. Any excuses for people not putting them in, like the maintenance, you know, it catches too much, it costs too much. So we wanted to break down any of these barriers and any of the excuses that people had for, for not implementing it. The real driver behind the development of the litter trap was to make the product more accessible, to make it cheaper, to make it easier to install, to make it easier to maintain, and to make it generally user-friendly. We detuned it to start with, so we thought, right, okay, let's not worry about the sediment. There's a lot of other products, and it's very expensive to take out that very fine level of pollutant. So let's concentrate on the bigger things, so cigarette butts and bigger. So by doing that, we were able to downsize it and make it so it could be hand maintainable and a lot cheaper to deliver and it could be flat packed and sent out in a box. So suddenly it became an engineering feat into a something that you could buy off the shelf and a consumer could purchase it and put it in themselves effectively. We've had to do a lot of engineering, we've had to do a lot of hydraulic testing to make sure the system could handle all the forces and loads, could easily be emptied by one person and most of all it didn't cause any flooding. There's so many drains out there, if you walk down the street you'll easily pass 10 drains and all of this pollution that's in the marine environment is going down those drains so we wanted to make it that anyone could put this product in and take care of their plastic footprint. Everyone who's tried a little tramp comes back for more. For every one we get in we stop 600 pieces of plastic a year on average. Once people use it they realise how much stuff is going down their drains, how easy the litter trap is, and they want more. Our mission is to try and get one in every drain in the world. We can make a big difference, and also by working with educators to help tell the story of what's going in the water, then you know, we see this as being an integral part of, of people wanting to do this themselves and make change. If you look at the ocean, the ocean is still bluey green. Um, it's not until you go and actually see the stormwater pipes and the stuff coming out of there, the sediment and the, the plastics and the really obvious pollution coming out of the pipes that you understand that, that the stormwater isn't clean. Being so 
passionate about the ocean, my happy place is being on a beach or in a boat. And to have the potential for that to be destroyed, I can't comprehend it, especially with young children, them not to be, have the ability to catch a fish, to go snorkeling, it's an atrocity. This is why we're so passionate about getting the litter trap out there. So people can take responsibility to stop the plastic going down their stormwater drains and making its way to the ocean.